One of the more outlandish lies that I hear the animal abusers and tiger cub pimps promoting is that Big Cat Rescue skins their cats for den decorations. And actually they get some of that language from the way we talk about how Big Cat Rescue started because we started by rescuing a cat at an auction who was going to be killed by a taxidermist and turned into a den decoration. The skins that the animal abusers are referring to are in these lit cabinets in our party pavilion at the sanctuary. Here is where we have weddings, bar mitzvahs, corporate retreats, and summer camp has occurred here as well. We often do school groups and if it rains this is an area where they can come inside and so what we have done over the years is as our cats have died of old age or medical issues we have saved one or two of each one of the species and the reason that I did that was I had visited it's probably been 10 or 11 years ago maybe 12 years ago I had visited a Holocaust museum and I thought they had done such an amazing job of showing where we have been so that we don't go there again. And I thought that is exactly what I want to do with the cats who have died. I don't want them to just be buried in the ground and disintegrate and never have their stories told again. And that's why we have a tribute website set up so that all of our cats are commemorated there and have their tributes. That's why we have our cemetery with their marble plaques that commemorate their life and death. But I thought, we are going to end the abuse of these big cats in captivity. I feel absolutely certain that that's gonna happen. And that's why the bad guys hate us so much because they see that happening too. And so they do everything they can to discredit us. But once that happens, I never want us to go back again and start doing the bad things that brought us to this day. So. That's why when the cats have died here over the years, I had had one or two, like I said, of each of the cats preserved so that they could be mounted in a display, kind of like a, a natural history museum, but we don't need another natural history museum. What we need are the type of museums like the Holocaust that talk about how we treated these animals so that we never treat them so badly again. And so this is an example right here of a jaguar pelt. And one of the things you'll see is that there is a big area here that was shaved. And the reason is because when our cats die, they don't just die one day. <laughs> we go through an awful lot of medical expense to try and give them a good quality of life throughout their entire life. And so that often means maybe getting surgery to fix something, dental work, they might have needed fluids, and so we shave the cats in order to administer those things sanitarily. If you were to talk to the taxidermist who preserved these skins for us, he'll tell you that Big Cat Rescue is the only place that ever brought him pelts where the animals had obviously had somebody trying to save their lives and that we are the only facility that wasn't either using these as a bragging right for having killed an animal or selling them like most of the other zoos do. When we put them into these cabinets, we label them so you can see what they are. And we also have stories posted. And if you're interested, I could do maybe a slideshow or something of each one of these stories so that you could stop and read them. But the purpose of those stories is to illustrate that this is what was happening and how it was happening over a period of time and how people started thinking differently about these animals. And as we get these rules passed and these laws passed that stop the abuse of the animals, I don't ever want anybody to forget that they went through such horrible things as what you're seeing in the images here. The very people who are speaking against Big Cat Rescue are still doing the kinds of things that you see in these images and are still promoting that kind of activity. 
they're still promoting having back having cats in backyards in horrible little cages like that Jamie did a really excellent job of pulling together quotes from the news, images of these cats being abused. And so whenever there's a party going on in here, this may be kind of a downer, but we want people to be educated. And every time we get the opportunity for anybody to be on site, we want them to learn about these horrible situations, the private ownership of these animals, the exploitation of these animals. We want them to know that this sort of thing is happening and has happened so that it never happens again. And of course, as you can see, we're talking about the very thing that these horrible abusers are currently doing. They're still breeding wild animals and selling them as pets and promoting them as pets. They're still using them as photo props where people pay to play with them or swim with them. And that can only happen for a very short period of time and then they get relegated to these horrible backyard cages like what you're seeing. The nice thing about taxidermying these pelts is that we can use them as educational pieces. We can let children actually see them and see that they were real cats who had real lives and real stories and hopefully um, engender a sense of appreciation for that animal without having to touch the live animal. I know the bad guys always say that you have to let people touch the animals or else they won't care about saving them in the wild, but the bad guys don't care anything about saving them in the wild. They care about making money off of them, and that's the only reason that they're pushing to allow people to touch them is because that's how they make a living. This little bobcat was hit by a car, and there was a, um, a storefront down in Channelside for the Visitors Bureau. And so what we did was, it, rather than just sending this cat to be cremated, which is what we currently do with all of our cats when they die, we went ahead and had the cat mounted. And all of the ferns and everything that you see are native Florida representations. And so we had it at the Visitor Center down there in Channelside with a big sign talking about how she had been hit by a car. And if you're visiting here, in the area watch out for our wildlife and you know give them a break don't go flying down through there like you're crazy and so she served a wonderful purpose for all of her kind there and then when they shut the storefront we brought her back here to big cat rescue we also have had a number of people just so you can see that's really a toy tiger um, we've had a number of people ask if we would take their fur coats and it's because they have become educated about the horrible way that animals are bred in fur farms. Big Cat Rescue started with the rescue of 56 cats from a fur farm, then 28 and then 22. So a lot of our original cats 23 years ago, 24 years ago, came from fur farms. And so when people learn about how the only way you get a fur coat is by killing a young bobcat, they don't want to wear it anymore and so they ask us if there's anything we can do with it and so we have taken in a couple of these items just to be able to show that this was very common back in the 60s people just were ignorant they i can't believe how many people have told me that they thought that the fur coat came from 
a cat who died of natural causes. And that's not the case. The cats are killed like you see in this fur farm image here. And then used to make these coats and fur trim on things. It's just a sickening, sickening industry, both the people that do it and the people that wear it. And so, of course, we wanted to cover that you know, these were fashion trends and that the way that these animals are captured in the wild is through these horrible leg hold traps and actually having one on display so people can imagine what it would be like to have your own foot or hand caught in that. And how when you go to other countries, and sometimes even here in the U.S., people will buy animals like this that are made out of, those are actually made out of cat fur, domestic cat fur that's been dyed to make it look like tigers. And so when people find out that they've bought items like that and how those items are made, a lot of times they have donated them to us so that we could educate others so that they don't make those horrible, horrible mistakes any longer. This last cabinet talks about the future and how we are making a change for good. And so it talks about the number of cats that we've had to turn away each year and how that number is declining as we've been getting more and more states to pass bans or partial bans on the private possession of these animals. And again, those are toy tigers up on top. It's not a real tiger tail hanging down there. We talk about our educational department. We talk about the big cat bills that we have out there. Currently, the primary bill that we are trying to pass is called the Big Cat Public Safety Act. That act would end the private possession of these animals. That's what the bad guys hate. They want to keep breeding and using these animals, and they just hate that Big Cat Rescue is having so much success in ending their miserable trade. We show images of how cats should live in the wild. And in order to do that, we have to stop the private possession of these animals. We set up a site called catlaws.com. Every big cat bill around the world is at catlaws.com and encourages people to take action. We talk about some of the sanctuaries that have failed and now we had to step in and take the animals because people were just not prepared for the lifetime care for animals who can live 20 years and cost $10,000 per cat per year just in their food and direct medical costs. This cabinet also talks about our rehab program and sending bobcats back to the wild. I hope this gives you some idea of how the people who are abusing these animals will take some small shred of truth and then twist it to try and turn it into something awful. And the reason they do that is because there is no legitimate reason for the type of industry that they're in. There's no excuse for pimping out cubs for a living. And there's nothing that Big Cat Rescue is doing wrong. So there's nothing they can say about us other than to make up lies and to try and convince you by using little bits of the truth, maybe a photo of our cabinets, and then not really telling you the entire truth. So here you've seen it. Happy to answer any questions you have. You can always contact me at cat at bigcatrescue.org. Thank you.